Welcome back to Giant Monster Games, I'm Adrian, and today we are doing a Mono White Goat Deck. Now, what is a goat deck, you might ask? Well, it's a deck that has a whole bunch of goats in it. Literally, I mean like the creature type goats. So that's what we're going to be building. Before I actually get into it, though, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to Giant Monster Games if you like this video and want to see more like it. And like always, there's voting up at the top right-hand corner up there where you can vote on an upcoming deck. Maybe not next week's deck, maybe not the week after, but it'll be somewhere in the future, depending on what you guys vote on. Moving on, talking about creatures. The first creature we have is Springjack Shepherd. We're running four copies of this, and it has Chroma which is basically the same thing as Devotion. So the card reads, when Spring Jack Shepherd comes into play, put a 0-1 white goat creature token into play for each white mana symbol in the mana cost of permanence you control. So that can be creatures, enchantments, artifacts technically, there's a couple artifacts out there, and plane walkers technically as well. So this means we want to get as many white mana symbols across as many permanents as we can possibly get, so we can get a ton of goats. And then we want to try and flicker this card to get even more goats, and basically get an army of goats. <laughs> this is the entire plan of the entire deck. So how do we actually maximize on this? Because we obviously don't want to be just playing Spring Jack Shepherd by itself, because then we will get just a single goat, which is really not very effective for its mana cost. The first card we have that synergizes with this is three copies of Mirror Entity. Now, Mirror Entity is a ship shifter with Changeling, which means it is technically also a goat, because it has all creature types, and it has a special ability which we are actually really interested in, which is pay X, and until end of turn, creatures we control get base power and toughness XX, which is whatever we paid, and become all creature types. The becoming all creature types is relatively unconsequential for us, we don't really care, but making all of our 0-1 goats into 4-4 four, four goats seems really cool, if you ask me. So this is the first card that's going to be synergizing with it, and we can also use it to pump up a lot of all of our creatures as well, because we have a lot of really kind of weak creatures we're going to be playing, because we want to just play a lot of low-cost creatures and then play Spring Jack Shepard on turn 4, or maybe turn 5, and get a ton of goats and then swing in for the win right away. So this is going to be helping us fill out the power and toughness of all those other creatures we have. Speaking of other creatures, we have four copies of Kithkin Harbinger. Now, Kithkin Harbinger is a 3-drop, which is okay, and it's a 1-3, which is also okay. Actually, it's pretty bad for a 3-drop, but its ability is what makes it really special. So if you've seen the Elemental Aggro deck, this is literally the Kithkin version of that card. So when it comes into play, we get a search our library for a Kithkin card, reveal it, and put it on top of our library. Now, both Springjack Shepherd and Mirror Entity are technically both Kithkin, because Mirror Entity is all creature types, so we can go and fetch up either of those two cards and put it on top of our library, which means the next turn we'll draw into it and continue with our win strategy. Carrying on though, let's talk about Flicker Wisp. We're running four copies of this because it is absolutely fantastic in this deck. To start out with, it has one white white in its mana cost, so it's going to give us two Devotion or two Chrome if you really want. It has Flying, which is fantastic, and it's a 3-1. So these are all really good things because it's going to help us close out the game. But that's not really the entire reason why it's in this deck. Its ability is when Flicker Wisp enters the battlefield, exile a another target permanent, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So we can be using this to flicker our Springjack Shepherd or flicker our Harbinger. Mostly those are our main two targets. Or, what is even better, we can actually use it to flicker anything on our opponent's board. So if we want to swing in and our opponent has, let's say, a Wormcoil Engine or some really big creature on their side of the battlefield, we can make it go away <laughs> for this turn only, and then we can swing in with all of our stuff and prevent that one thing from blocking. We can also do this with artifacts or other stuff, so if our opponent has an Ensnaring Bridge, we can also get rid of Ensnaring Bridge for a turn, swing in with a bunch of creatures and still get the win. This card has a ton of utility, and that is one of the reasons why it is in this deck, because we get to get rid of stuff we don't want to deal with. Moving into creatures that have a double white in their mana cost, we have a Knight of the White Orchid, which we're running four copies of, obviously. Now, this creature is a 2 2 for 2 with First Strike, which is actually surprisingly relevant in this deck. First Strike allows us to actually keep our opponent at bay most of the time because we can block and not trade, but actually block and get rid of their creatures. And it actually has a pretty interesting special ability, which is whenever it comes into the battlefield, if our opponent controls more land than us, we may search our library for a planes and put that into the battlefield, and then we shuffle our library. Which means if we're playing against a deck like Tron that's trying to accelerate their mana growth and get a lot of lands into play, we can actually use this guy to equal the board state and actually get a ton of mana and thin our deck out so we're not going to be drawing lands, hopefully drawing into more creatures, which is really good actually. Kind of like our next creature, which is Persistent Captain. Now, Persistent Captain also has white white in its mana cost. It's a two drop, which is nice. 
also has First Strike, which as I talked about before is actually really good in this deck because we can usually fend off our opponent rather than trading up our creatures a lot. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we get a 1-1 White Soldier creature token, which it's kind of like our goats, where we're just going to be getting a bunch of extra tokens, and then hopefully making them bigger, specifically with Mirror Entity and some other tricks we have going on down the road. It is really good. I mean, this, this card has been proving really good in this deck, because we are already at go-wide strategy, and just feeds into our go-wide strategy even more. And the last card we have is three copies of Mentor of the Meek. It is a three drop, it is a two two, and its ability is whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under our control, we may pay one and draw a card. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, Everything except Flicker Wisp has a power of two or less. So we can use this guy as our primary draw engine, specifically once we get to the mid to late game where we're going to be playing creatures, tapping mana, drawing more cards, playing more creatures, hopefully really accelerating our board state once we get to mid to late game, and just overrunning our opponent because they just can't deal with us playing so many creatures because we are a go-wide strategy deck. That is going to be all of our creatures, so let's talk about enchantments, because we have a lot of enchantments in this deck, starting out with four copies of Honor the Pure and two copies of Spear of Heliod. Both of these cards are kind of doing the same thing. They're both giving all of our creatures plus one, plus one, or, well, Honor the Pure is technically giving white creatures plus one, plus one, but all of our creatures are white, so they are all going to get plus one, plus one. And Spear of Heliod also has the bonus feature of if a creature has swung in and attacked us and we have some open mana, we can actually kill that creature off by a destroy target creature that has dealt damage to us this turn. So this can be used to get rid of creatures that may be a pain in our butt early on in the game when we don't quite have big enough creatures to actually block certain things. Now I do want to point out that Spear of Heliod is a legendary enchantment artifact, which means we can't have two of them in play at the same time, which is why we actually only have two in the deck. Otherwise I would totally run four because it is actually a really good card, because it also has white white in its mana cost, which means we get more Devoshchroma than we would actually if we played something like Honor the Pure, which is only giving us a single white. The next two cards are going to give us a little bit of control. We have one copy of Oblivion Ring and two copies of Status Snare. Now both these cards are kind of doing the same thing. They're going to target something and make it exile. Oblivion Ring technically can target anything except a land, so it's actually really good in that front, where Status Snare can only target a creature that our opponent controls, so it's a little bit less flexible, but it does have Flash, which means we can actually cast it on our opponent's turn if they're attacking in. They're, they both have their upsides and both have their downsides. Status Snare also has double white in its mana cost, which is why we're running two of them compared to two Oblivion Rings or three Oblivion Rings, which technically would be better if we didn't want the extra Devotion slash Chroma. And the last card we have that is not an enchantment is three copies of Blessed Alliance. Now this is giving us a whole bunch of different options. It's allowing us to gain life if we're in a pinch. We almost never use it, but it does give us that option. It allows us to untap up to two target creatures, generally our creatures, if you may have guessed that already. And the most important one is it makes target opponents sacrifice an attacking creature, which means we can generally get them to get rid of stuff whenever they decide to swing in. Really easy for us to early game get rid of stuff that we just can't deal with. And now let's talk about lands. We're going to be running three copies of Ghost Quarter because it is way too good not to be running, especially in a monocolored deck where we don't need to be getting a whole bunch of planes. Well, we do need a whole bunch of planes because we have a lot of, like, double white. But that doesn't matter. That is not the point of this. This is allowing us to deal with Tron and Manlands, and it is absolutely fantastic in the deck, especially if we have Knight of the White Orchid in our hand. We blow up one of their lands, play it, and then get another land in response, which is fantastic for us. And lastly, we have 19 planes. Yes, that is right. We are running 22 lands on this deck because we want to try and get Springjack Shepherd on turn 4 in if possible. And before we finish up this deck tech, let's talk about our sideboard. First, we have a single copy of Devote Lightcaster. This is going to be helping us if we're going up against most black decks because black removal is a total thing and we like to generally have some protection against it. Also, it has triple white in the mana cost, which makes it really good for getting that chroma up and running. Then we have two copies of Dryad Militant, which is helping us deal with instant sorceries in the graveyard. So Snapcaster Mage and Tarmogoyf. Then we have two copies of End Hostilities. This is helping us deal with other go-wide strategies. We're just going to blow the entire board away. And it also deals with Boggles, which is really hard for us to deal with. It also helps us deal with a couple equipment decks that are currently running around the format because it also destroys permanents attached to creatures. So it's kind of doing a little bit of double duty there. Next, we have three copies of Core Firewalker. It has protection from red. This is if you're going up against burn decks. It's going to let us gain some life, and it's going to be giving us white white, which is what we want for Chroma. Moving right along, we have three copies of Leon Relic Warder. This guy is helping us deal with artifacts enchantments. Basically, he comes into play. We get an exile an enchantment or an artifact, and we also get white white when we do it. So instead of running something that would actually destroy artifacts and enchantments, we're actually going to get a creature, which is going to give us a little bit of extra chroma, which is kind of the name of the game in this deck if you haven't guessed already. Moving right along, we have two copies of Nevermore. Now this allows us to put down cards that generally give us a hard time, such as Ensnaring Bridge, 
or we can also use it to slow down or even stop some combo decks. So instead of running Pithing Needle, we're running this thing because it has White White and his mana cost. You're probably tired of me saying that already. <laughs> and the last card we have is Tormod's Crypt. Tormod's Crypt is getting rid of Graveyard, so it's going to help us get rid of Dredge, it's going to help us get rid of Tarmogoyf, and it's going to help us with Snapcaster Mage. I guess there's also a couple other things it helps out with, but you guys get the plan. You guys have seen Tormod's Crypt in probably every single deck tech I've ever done. Anyways, that is going to conclude the entire deck, but before we end this video, let's talk about some upgrades. The first card, and probably the most obvious if you've played a Devotion deck before, is Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. This is going to give us a ton of mana, because it gives you mana based on how much Devotion of a specific color you have, because our deck is largely based around white devotion or white chroma if you really want to get into it. This is really good at accelerating our mana and closing out the game for us. Next we have the card I want to see in every single white deck, that is Path to Exile. This is obviously a replacement for Blessed Alliance and I would actually run four of these cards and not three because they are amazing spot removal that gets rid of almost every single creature we ever have a problem with. They are totally good. I would highly recommend it. Next, we have Obelisk of Erd. Now, this is a really good card, and it actually could have been in the deck itself, but after some testing, I wasn't super happy with it. Basically, when it comes into play, you have to choose a creature type, so you're generally going to be choosing either Kithkin, Soldiers, or Goats, or sometimes Humans as well, and it gives every creature you control of that type plus two plus two. The problem is not all of our creatures are of that specific type, but you can use Mirror and Entity to turn them all into that specific type, which is kind of the synergy. I wasn't getting as good results as I wanted to out of it, but it is actually still a really good card. You may have to go up to four Mirror Entities to make this work really well, though. And the rest of the cards we have are all sideboard upgrades. They are really good sideboard upgrades, and I would highly recommend it, specifically in this deck, because they're all enchantments. The first card we have is Rest in Peace. This is going to be getting rid of Graveyard, so this is replacing Tormod's Crypt, because it's a enchantment that is white that's going to be adding to our Devotion slash Chroma, which is fantastic. Second, we have Ley Lines of Sanctity. This is helping us deal against Burn, and it is, again, it's adding two white to our mana base, and if we have it in our opening hand, we get to start with it in play, which is absolutely fantastic. Then we have Stony Silence. This is helping to kill some combo decks, but mostly slow down Tron players, which is something I always want to do. And lastly, we have Grand Abolisher, which is actually really, really good against all of Burn and every single control deck, because they can't play spells, activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments, on your turn. So that means they're not doing anything once you have this card in play. And that is going to be the entire Mono White Goats deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like the video, subscribe to Giant Monster Games, leave me a comment what you thought of this video, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.